So many people already. How are you guys? Yes, I thought we should do an EV stream. Too much cycles. I am a um, cycled boy, but uh, let's do some real time stuff. So I was messing around with these shapes and I'm thinking we should try and recreate this one. It's manageable, I think. It doesn't take too long. Distorted, ten, distorted spiral tentacles. Yes, that is uh, what we will make. <laughs> So let me know what the sound levels are and I'll try and adjust these um, as we go along. <clears throat> okay, so let's um, yeah, let's look at this for a little bit. Uh, this is going to be um, some fun with array modifiers and just some volumetrics. You know, you can't do EV without volumetrics <laughs> or at least it feels really good. Um, Especially if you're used to working with volumetrics in cycles, it's just, it's so responsive in Eevee. And it's a, uh, especially, let's see if, if we pause this, if I, uh, so let's do a render. The shadows, so smooth. Perfect. But yeah, let's, um, let's uh, break this down and um, see how it's made. So there was this shape. Uh, I was really into a couple of days back, which is a uh, circle and um, a uh, um, if you extrude it like inward, oh let me turn on my screencast keys. I feel like the music is a bit loud. Let me know if it's, uh... yeah okay so uh, this shape is really easy to make. Let's just, uh, let me show you. That's it. <laughs> And uh, it's, um, I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, so we'll be starting with a new blend file. And uh, yeah, the music is probably too loud. So we're we'll starting with a new blend file and deleting everything. And uh, we'll be in Eevee, of course. So let's go ahead and make our circle. Now, the first trick today um, is something I started doing a couple of days ago, and it's uh, it's changed my workflow just so much. It's insane. So uh, let's say you want to double the vert vertices uh, from 32 to 64. You have to click and then manually type in, right? But as with Blender in everywhere in Blender, you can just click somewhere and then uh, click again and then just type like multiply by two and then press enter. And that so now you kind of double that value, right? So I set up this macro to just um, click and press end and press shift and the start thing and then two and then enter. So I can just do it really quickly and it works with everything. I can change the resolution 200%, 400%, 50%, 4K and it's really cool. So I just did it uh, with my keyboard. It's a Logitech keyboard. Uh, the G815 and there is this macro settings so macros so it basically does all this it clicks down the mouse presses and shift and you can kind of remove the delay a little bit as well so it's just it's amazing um, <laughs> I'm not saying it's amazing because I figured it out because I didn't um, multiplying stuff is something a lot of programs support so you can use this script in, for example, After Effects or Premiere or a lot of the Adobe programs as well. So, yeah, so that's how you make a circle, I guess. Uh, let's go into edit mode by pressing tab and s extrude and scale. Uh, let's go to front orthographic view and just rotate it a little bit. And select everything by pressing A. And that's our shape. So the whole thing with the... Uh, thing that you saw earlier is um, that we can get um, creative. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just reading the comments while I'm uh, trying to do this live tutorial thing. 
for the second time, I guess. Your internet is lagging. Yep, I'm sorry. So I just really hope my internet isn't lagging too much. I will be trying to add uh, subtitles um, for the stuff that doesn't make it in the stream, I guess, if some parts gets chopped out. Uh, music is probably a bit quiet. Yeah, so my keyboard is the Logitech G915, I think. Okay, so let's uh, make some stuff. So let's take this thing and uh, give it a bevel modifier. That's, um, and set the limit method, method to angle. And we can half this value, boop, boop. <laughs> and uh, right click, shade smooth. And under normals, in the object data properties, Let's turn on auto smooth and we got this smooth shape. And uh, now we're going to do an array modifier to make it go up a lot. Um, yeah, so we can just increase this count here and it goes the wrong direction. So let's turn off relative offset. Oh, sorry. So let's turn off relative offset and set it to object offset. So we can use the whole trick about this thing is to use an empty object as the controller. So now when we see the array from the side, we can move the empty Boop. and we have this thing that moves really nicely if you press R, R. Yeah, we can scale it down, move it up a little bit and we're getting a really cool shape. I'm happy about that. So let me go ahead and save that. And uh, now that I've saved it, we can... Oh, sorry. <laughs> now that I've saved it, we can go and uh, look at the previous version, which is this one, I think. Nope, that's, that's the wrong one. Here we go. Yeah, so we're going to try and make this shape um, kind of curl around a little bit. And we're going to make a camera that's going to kind of go around the entire thing. Yeah. So, yeah, let's go back to this one. And... Um, okay, so let me ask you, would you like to do the lighting first in Eevee? Or should we kind of make the whole scene first? What do you guys think? I think it's only like... 1.7 seconds delay in the chat, so feel free to be... Uh... Oh, it's probably lagging a bit. Light, light. Okay, so yeah, so let's do the lighting first. So, um, the right here under world. Um, let's press volume and... Vo oh, yeah. Uh, let's go to volume scatter to get the volumetric effect. And uh, render properties. Uh, what's this? Sorry. Render properties, volumetrics. Uh, oh, it's on. Yeah, okay, so everything's on, like it's supposed to be. So, what we need to do is add a light. It is a simple point light. And let's just set this to 200. That's not strong enough, so we can double it using our clever macro trick. Hmm, why is everything being bright? I don't understand. Oh yeah, because the volumetric is way too thick. So let's go to the world settings and under density, I'm probably a little bit in the way here. <laughs> there we go. Under density, let's just reduce this. There we go. So yeah, like 0 0.001, no. 0 0.016 is currently my value. You can just dial this in by yourself. Uh, yeah, let's do that. No, you know what? Let's do it a little bit more subtle. So let's make a ground plane. Shift A, add plane. Scale it up. And what I like to do in all the stuff I make ever is to take the strength of the kind of the world color and just crush it down. Make it like dark and contrasty and it's just so, it feels like we're in a studio all the time. Okay, 
Uh, where are you from? I'm from Norway, which is uh, where my accent is from, I guess. So, this is basically the entire lighting setup. Uh, if we like, we can take this plane, uh, we can subdivide it. And let's go ahead and take a... Um, just make a little bit of a hill, right? Yeah, there we go. So it's um, it's more elegant when the fall off is kind of, it's on a hill. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I feel like that's what I want to see. And uh, let's move it up. Okay, so now we're gonna make some more of this. No, wait, first let's animate it. So uh, if we're selecting the empty object and we're pressing R and then R again, we can kind of like, just move it like this and animate it in... I mean, I think this looks amazing already. Look at that little twirl. So, um, we could do the um, uh, real-time animation thing that we'll be doing a lot on this channel. But let's just try and stick with regular keyframes for now. So I'm going to split my thing in uh, vertical split. And let's press Shift F6. And let's make a keyframe, I, and then location. Oops, sorry. Uh, I, and then rotation. So it's going to be a rotation keyframe for this little guy. And let's move um, 100 frames. You can press Control T to make it show seconds instead. And what's so great about Eevee is that I don't feel restricted by making it a slow animation. In cycles, it's always the dilemma where you're adding hours of render time for each second, <laughs> almost. So, yeah, so let's do uh, four seconds, for example. And uh, I want to see this kind of curl around a little bit. Yeah, like that. So, a new keyframe. And now we got this slow, kind of elegant curl. And I feel like this starting position should be more relaxed. Yeah, like this. And we can... Ex Yeah, that's really good. That's really cool. It kind of swoops around. Yeah, so let's extend this. Um, let me know if the um, um, sound on the music is too loud. Boom, reading some comments. Uh, Yeah, I'm from Norway. <laughs> That's a question. Okay. So for everyone watching this on YouTube in the future, if it stays up, um, the, thank you for staying with us so far. I understand that the retention rate on a video is different than on a live stream, but perhaps you're having this on in the background or doing something else. Yeah, so... Um, Perhaps I shouldn't focus so much on the format. I'm just having a good time in Blender right now. Uh, oh, that's something interesting. So by moving it on the... Yeah, we can kind of... It can swim a little bit. We have to be careful with motion air to not make something weird. I mean, it's supposed to be a little bit weird, but let's, let's be careful. So let's add a location keyframe by pressing I and L. And uh, let's move forward a little bit. I want to press G and then shift Z. So we're controlling all the axes except for the Z axis. So I want to kind of shrink it a little bit like this. Yeah, that's cool. And what's so great about this thing that we're going to make today is that now that it's just one, it feels just so arbitrary and you're kind of like, well, whatever, but I don't, really care about this but I think this little swing here this little swoop like this one it, when you get to like duplicate a lot of these guys and going to stand up and it's going to be like a really symmetri symmetrical light in the middle there I think it's going to be really great so let's uh, slow down the animation and we'll just extend this let's do 20 seconds There we go, 20 seconds, 
Yeah, so right now it looks just stupid when it's starting out like this, but I think it's going to be really cool when we get uh, when you get some friends. That's what it's all about. Okay, so here's the question. Does that array work if you scale the empty? Yes, it does. And that's what we've been doing to get it kind of like a... Um, um, yeah, it has like a some sort of a tentacle vibe, like a futuristic one. Uh, so if I scale the empty right now, just pressing S, you can see that... It's, oh, it's a little bit difficult to show, actually. Here, yeah, so you can see that they're kind of... We have a lot of control on the... On the entire shape. So, here's something that's really cool. Since everything we've done so far is uh, procedural, or using modifiers in a non-destructive workflow, we can head over to the modifier properties here. And um, under the array, we can just increase the count, so let's double it. And we have just a really interesting shape. It kind of just extends. I think it looks really cool. Okay, yeah, so let's give him some friends. We will make him... Hmm, should it go inward or kind of outward? So if we make him... Yeah, let's make it, um, let's just move him out a little bit, like five meters. Wow, this guy's five meters. That's scary. And uh, yeah, so I think we could have used some modifiers to duplicate this guy. But I'm, I've tried a little bit with some mirror modifiers and stuff like that. And, uh, oh, sorry, I see someone spamming. Let me just uh, give him a little break. Sorry, man. Um, how did you get to this point? Oh, uh, if you mean in the video right now, it should be available on YouTube later. So you could just like kind of scrub back and uh, see if you like. But yeah, that I mean, it's a good question. Let's do a... Um, a uh, quick um, recap of what we've done so far. We oh, I can I can disable the modifier so we can see it, everything. Yeah. So here's a shape that we made using a circle and extruding it inward, and then just kind of rotating it a little bit, and then selecting everything and extruding it up. And it's a really cool shape. And then we added a bevel modifier, and then we added a empty object to act as an invisible controller. So this empty is sort of like a, um, a... I'm not going to be able to explain this. Let me just show you. So let's set all the array to zero. And then I'm increasing the amount of copies and they are behaving based on how this empty object is different. So it's a little bit smaller, which means that each copy kind of scales down. And it's a little bit rotated, which means every copy rotates. And it's a little bit off location, so everything else is kind of like skewing a little bit. And once we get some animation on this... Oh, I messed up. <laughs> oh, no, did I? Yeah. Let me just hit Control C a bunch. Oh no, it's the... Yeah, it's the animation. Yeah, so nothing is wrong. Yeah, so the array is just a bunch of stuff on top of each other. So yeah, so to move this one um, out of the way... Mm, sorry. To move this one out of the way as we had planned, we have to delete some of the keyframes of the empty. You know what? Let's just delete all of them, all of the empty location keyframes. It wasn't that much of an interesting uh, introduction to movement anyways. And let's do 20 copies of the array. And let's do... You've just answered my question I had with this recap. Thanks. Hey, no problem. Uh, Andrew Ogolo says, I need to go back to Blender. Yes, you do. Blender is going to be the future. And it is the future and the present and the past. So let me just stick to making this stuff um, 
finished. Yeah, so now that we've deleted the keyframes for the empty, we can move this around freely. So let's move it down five meters. Don't forget guys, this five meter big tentacle thing. And um, let's introduce a fifth object. And that is going to be another empty object. Wow, that is really exciting. And let's make a sphere because um, I think it's nice to have some different shapes in your scene. And we can right click and increase the empty draw size. That's probably too big. And now let's take this thing and this thing and shift click on them and then the empty and then just press control P. Parent to object. And now we can rotate this and empty. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And it's going to kind of follow. So let me just del let me just hide some stuff. I'm using H to hide. And you can press Alt H to make it come back. Sorry, I'm gonna have to make sure my voice doesn't. <sighs> yeah, so uh, let's hide the other stuff. And now what we can do. Uh, we can select everything and we can just press shift D to copy and um, we can press R to rotate and it's going to hmm wait I'm not sure yeah so set the origin to 3d cursor now you can select everything and um, I somehow like to have this as sort of like the main object so um, <laughs> Ton Rusendal is your god. Accept him now or be consumed later. I agree. Ton Rusendal is definitely uh, a god or something amazing. So, um, he's a man I really respect. Yeah, so let's press Shift D and then press R. And you can hold on Control. And in the top left corner, you can see, for example, 45 degrees. So that's like a um, what's that? An eighth of a circle? I don't know. But we can press Shift R to just repeat that thing. Boop, 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 boop. And now we have all of them. Boop. Like this. And I don't want to say I told you so, but it looks a lot better, <laughs> better when it's a lot of them. It kind of looks random when it's just one, but... Um, there's something majest majestic, majestic, I don't know, about all of these kind of stretching towards the light. There is some weird stuff going on with the curling hair that I liked better in the previous version, but um, it's it's similar enough, I think, for me to be happy at least. Yeah, so this is a bit cool that it kind of like whoop, goes in like this. Yeah, so let's make a camera. Uh, Shift-A, camera. So that's the end of the... No. <laughs> uh, and once you have the camera created, you can press... Um, let me just make sure we see it. You can press Alt-R and Alt-G and just kind of rotate it 90 degrees. Move it behind a little bit so we have it. Yeah. And I also... I always make this window kind of small because I'm just so afraid of the render times when I'm real-time previewing. But I mean, Eevee is the real-time render engine, so just make that camera big, man. Make it big. Now, we're gonna make... <laughs> Mike. We're gonna make a big empty. So, empty and make a sphere. And if you're not sure if it's in the middle, press Alt-G and right-click, empty draw size. Make it big, because this is going to be our camera controller. So, um, but there's one more thing that we need to make, now that I think about it. This is going to be like a parent object. So the camera, press camera and press shift, and then select empty and press control P, and parent to object. So now we can move this around, and the camera will kind of elegantly revolve around our scene. Perfect, but we want to add like a little bit of a, not a camera shake, but some sort of um, steady cam 
is is emotion i think is amazing so let's make another empty wow we're there's a lot of empties <laughs> and uh move it to the middle of your scene there right click scale up the draw size and now we can select the camera shift select the empty and press f3 and just search for track and let's set it to track to constraint and now we can move this empty and the camera will follow it so here is where we add a simple location keyframe to this empty and up here let's press n to bring out this little menu modifiers so what we're about to do is we're going to add a modifier to one of our keyframes so this will make some procedural noise perfect let's let's look at this energy drink Um, do you post that? Not sure if I mean. Uh, yeah, color is missing, definitely. Uh, let me know some color suggestions. What would you like to see? Um, if you could write some hexadecimal codes, that would be nice. Not, not necessarily saying what color it is, but just saying, I think this hex color looks nice. And then we can all be surprised at what it looks like. That's a good idea. So let's increase the scale here on the noise modifier so we get this like slow going back and forth yeah that's too fast uh, let's double it and then let's copy this f modifier i'm wondering what the f is for let's copy this and then go to the y location paste it and on the offset just scramble this with a random number and then z location boopy doop oh, there we go so now we have this kind of dreamy swimming kind of Wow, this almost looked like we're underwater. Yeah, some emission shaders. Hmm, I'm not sure if that's going to work because we're in Eevee. But am I, am I the only one that's getting some... Um... Okay, let me select the camera here. I'm getting some um, underwater vibes from this. That we're sort of like... It's almost like a diver is trying to just film some stuff. Perhaps um, it could... Oh, here are the hexadecimal codes. Nice. Yeah, let's try and give the um, light some color. What? Is there... Oh, okay, so it's here. Yeah. So, uh, F, one, two, three, F, F. That's... Wow. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we can work with that. Let's just desaturate it and uh, <laughs> change the hue. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Thank you, man. That looks great. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, am I? Yeah, it's... So I want to make it a little bit more... Um, like a blue oh here's something nice if you want to change like both of these like the red and green you can like kind of drag your mouse down a little bit and you can kind of do both of them you can do all three actually if you drag it all the way down it kind of yeah that's really cool so let's give it like a bluish yeah perhaps uh okay so here's a guy with a color suggestion for the tentacles so let's just agree that these are tentacles now and I'm um, selecting all of them and let's take the main one that has the material control L and link materials so now we can only change the material once uh, what was the color sorry I missed you uh, where are you tentacle guy yeah there you are E zero eight nine A eight. Interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so final color suggestion. 
for the ground. Uh, maybe some little zoom. Good idea. Yeah, let's do it. Emission shader on some of the circles. Hmm. I'm not really sure how I would do that. Since they're all being duplicated by the array modifier. So I'm not sure if that's possible. Okay, so for the ground, yeah, let's... V Gadgia, I got you. Let me have a look at the ground. And by the way, let's do all diffuse materials because diffuse and then a little bit of bloom, it is, and then soft shadows. That is the secret to Eevee, basically. I've always been a cycles boy, and you know this. I've uh, rendered my fair share of uh, traces, racing those trace, tracing those rays. Yeah, but in Eevee, I, I'm just so in love with Bloom, so just turn on Bloom. And then if the light is bright enough, you're getting like a little bit of, uh, yeah, this little glow kind of thing. Now it's exaggerated, but when it's just a little subtle, kind of, yeah, that's because that's when then you start to touch on some photorealistic stuff. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's Eevee's sort of. Achilles heel, isn't it? That it's so supposed to be like a fast, not that photorealistic stuff, but diffuse plus bloom. Remember that, my friends. Uh, what was I supposed to do? Yeah, the ground. Okay. <laughs> ground. How are you, my ground friend? There you are. Four, seven, four, E, three, one. Interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, we're not exactly changing that much here with just adding some different colors, but uh, colors are nice. Also, my final Eevee tip for today, or I don't know, is um, try and stay away from the depth of field. I think uh, the cycle's depth of field is just so mind-blowingly good that it's difficult to love the Eevee depth of field. And that's floor with glossy material. I'm not sure. Cycles is my dad. Well, that's, yeah. Achilles heel means weakness. Thank you. I, yeah, I think I, yeah. Okay, so I'm thinking that the ground should be a little bit darker. Or, yeah. Perhaps we could try and make it uh, explore a higher. You know, I'm missing some foreground details here. Let's try and make... Um... Oh no! Is the stream dying? I'm getting some uh, error messages here. I really hope I'm not uh, losing you guys. Is the stream dead? Uh, stream is good for me. Okay, nice. So I'm getting this error message. Uh, sorry for um, focusing too much on that. It's fine now. Okay, good. Yeah, so can we all send like, um, you know, this emoji with the kind of the red lights? Uh, if the stream goes down, so I have to repeat anything. Could you just try and spam that emoji? So we're good right now, but that's the emergency emoji. If I think emergency is sports, right? Okay, so just drop some frames for a little while. That's great. Yeah. Um, okay, so would you like, would you guys like to see some details here? Oh, oop. Uh, some kind of foregrounds, foreground details like this. Here. Uh, would you like to see some of this or would you like to render it out like a video and take a look at some formats that are good? Let me know. Add coral. Oh yeah, coral. Is that kind of like the plant thing? We could try some, yeah, some, like some futuristic seaweed kind of thing. That could definitely be cool. Uh, foreground with grass. Yeah, okay, so let's, um, yeah, so let's do, 
So what's a cool shape? Um, yeah. Oh, we need we need some music when I'm modeling this shape. Let me just try and make an interesting shape in 30 seconds. Perfect. That is um, that is the most interesting shape I've made in a while. Yep. I'm proud of it. Be proud of your work, people. Um, so let's give this a bevel modifier. Set to angle. And let us do a... Um, one coral done. Yeah, but that's the secret. This, this is all the corals. If you have something normal, you just have to take one of the stuff, one of the things, and make it weird. and Or not weird, but kind of like different. Is that This is kind of like the same vibe, isn't it? As the plants. It's just that it's it's a car logo instead. No, it is sort of like a... Um, yeah, I think I can like this. So let's do a... Um, how can we make this interesting? Yeah, so let's do a curve. Sorry, I'm working a little bit fast right now because I'm just trying to... Um, I want to have time to make this into an actual final video that we could look at because that was the main sort of feedback from the last stream that we wished we could have seen the end result more. Yeah, so let's do a um, auto smooth and then yeah, we have to let's wait with the auto smooth. Oh, this is just worse now. Hmm. Add edge split modifier. Yeah, perhaps that's that I might actually do the trick. I'm not sure. I'm, I think perhaps uh, we should try and avoid the whole uh, bevel situation. Oh, what? No. Uh, <laughs> okay, so it's going to be seaweed, like, right? It's not. It's not the end of the world if it's not. Uh... Yeah, that's cool. So let's just make this shape um, follow this curve. So add a curve modifier. And let me know if this is going behind my head. Um, yeah, of course. Whoops. Oh, here's a pro tip. You can just hold on control and then scroll on this one. And then you can try out all the different ones. Because it also it always takes a while to kind of go through these. Yeah, there we go. So this is going to sound like whoop, like, yeah, this is good. Um, oh, okay. So let's just edit this one then. And let's do, uh, you know what? We should have done shape keys instead. Um, No, let's do a curve. Or can I animate this one? No. What? How can I? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'll just use uh, this stupid workaround. Yeah, so let's 
You know what? Let's just make this um, random movement. Some seaweed movement. And uh, boop. And boop. And boop. -boop. Yeah, it's too fast. So double it. Double. Has anyone seen the episode of The Office when Robert California goes, double it? That was the idea that made me want to double stuff in Blender. I love The Office. Okay, so let's add some seaweed. Um, where's the curve? Pull, where's the curve? And the seaweed. Oh, weird. Uh, yeah, because we do need more empties in the scene. Yes, thank you. Who was that? V Gaggia. Yes. So I'm gonna make uh, an empty just for you, my friend. Um, I don't hope your name doesn't mean anything. Uh, let me just call you V Guy. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, let's take this part of the. No, where's the curve? Yeah, so let's take this one, the curve. Oh, the curve, what? And the curve? Yeah, there we go. Hook to selected object. Yeah, okay, nice. So now we have uh, an empty, there we go. So all of this is sort of like our seagrass. Or seaweed. So let's move this over here. Yeah, perfect. Mm. Menu is slightly behind your head. Yep, I'm sorry. I will try to kind of just do like the swoop if that happens. So let's take a look at our. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna make this. Yeah, there we go. There you are. I'm going to take this and we are going to duplicate it. Yeah, we need to be, it needs to be a little bit smaller. Oh. No, you know what? It's big enough. <laughs> and uh, oh, yeah, we can rotate it a little bit. So there's our seagrass working its magic and let's hmm is it going to be really abstract or are you adding things like fish um i'm probably not going to add fish uh thinking of getting into blender type stuff carper fjord that is a fjord in your name nice uh, you should, you should get into Blender. Okay, so we're going to need to add another empty. Uh, let's do a sphere empty. Let's parent all these to, wait, can I do this? Nope. Uh, the curve modifier is a really bad idea. You know what? Let's, let's forget the curve. Yeah. Let's, um... Take this thing and let's have it standing still. That's really boring. But I really want to try and export this as a video because I just want to show you uh, some interesting techniques. So yeah, let's scale this down a little bit, scatter it around. Uh, you know what, let's, instead of duplicating this with, um, uh, where is it? Yeah, well, instead of using Shift D, let's do Alt D. Alt D, and then we can just kind of move it around, like, let's do 20. Oh. Yeah, so now we have all of this seaweed. I think it's cool that it's so symmetric, symmetrical. What do you guys think? You could have parented the curve to an empty and just parented empties together. Ah, you know, I always knew the problem here was that this scene doesn't have enough empties. 
Oh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I think we should try and export this to a video because I have some other stuff I want to try and show you. Uh, I want to show you. So let's do... Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do a test render and see what it looks like with the soft shadows. Okay, so let's make the shadows softer. Um, like this. Yeah, that's good. And let's... Oh, we haven't animated the camera yet. Yeah, my bad, sorry. So let's animate our empty that's controlling the camera. Let's go to 18 seconds. And let's do... Yeah, let's do 120 degrees. There's no need to be really exact about that because we're just doing like a... We're sort of like swimming around. Yeah, that's what we're doing. So now let's animate this one from below here. Like this, and then let's go forward. Ooh, and then let's go up. And was there some guy here mentioning about, talking about some zooming? We'll be zooming a little bit, I think. So here we are, and on the focal length, just press I, and then go forward, and let's do 54.6 millimeter, perfect. So let's tilt up a little bit. Oh, that zoom, that tilt is going too slowly. And there we go. Oh, yeah, and we want to try and start... So this is a boring camera rotation, I think. I think it's it's really good to just make it start... Like, you give it some starting speed. So you can press V and just set it to vector. And the camera just sort of... It has a starting speed already. And, it, and uh, you'd have to... Exp excuse me for these horrible looking shapes. But uh, it adds something at least. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff happening when they curl around. Should we try and add another camera that kind of is a close-up of those? I think that could be really cool. So uh, let's select this first camera. Let's make some space here. Press Control B to make like a, a cut, sort of. You're sort of uh, changing the color. So let's go forward. No, changing the color. <laughs> Sorry, I read comments when I was talking. Yeah, so this is the camera. Uh, this is sort of like a marker that says what camera are we cutting to right now. So we can kind of go to... Yeah, let's do when the exciting curling sort of starts. Let's do 12 seconds. And then we can just add another camera and press Control. And now that other camera is selected and press Control B. And well, that looks weird, but it's a cut. So it kind of cuts from one camera to another. So let's just select the other camera and uh, move it out. And uh, I'm using the uh, view navigation, walk navigation, and I've mapped that to shift F. So now I can sort of like move around with a camera like this. And we can kind of get a really good looking close up from below on this guy. And then you can right click when the camera is selected and just zoom in with the camera lens angle. Yeah, so the first thing that I think, um, what does this look like in cycles? Well, that's a really good question. We could have a look. So let's do a render. Sorry, let's do a render with EV looks like this and let's just set this to cycles without changing anything else and let's do a render Yeah, so first of all, it's a lot more noisy and we can see more of the geometry being messed up because I think there is something wrong with the bevel modifier. I think we should be um, careful. 
So, yeah, let's cycle between these. It's surprisingly not that much of a difference. The cycles takes into account the bounce light from the fog itself on this side of the stuff, like this color. But I think the EV version here seriously looks better. So, and if we're comparing 32 seconds render time to what, uh, 89 hundreds of a second? No. Well, it's less than one second at least. Yeah, so let's go back to Eevee. I mean, the stream is called Eevee. It's, we shouldn't be in cycles at all. But let's animate this camera a little bit because I want to continue. So we have this movement that goes around like this, right? It kind of, it goes like this, whoop, and then it stops, right? So we sort of want to, we want to continue this movement a little bit and then we can stop on the close up. So that's what we'll do and then we'll render it out as a video. So um, let us make, <laughs> you guessed it, an empty object. And because this is going to be like the, uh, this is a cam, the camera uh, two is called camera 001. You know what, let's just rename this, rename this to camera two and then camera one. So it's a little bit consistency. And let's take this null object, empty object, sorry, or I'm not sorry to all my After Effects friends out there. Select this empty, control P and parent to object. And now we can sort of like do this beautiful, yeah, we're sort of, yeah, that's a good movement. Yeah, like this. So let's get a little bit closer. And then let's go here. And then let's continue the movement. Sort of like here. Yeah, and then let's make it um, a vector. So, or we can just rotate it. And then you can press uh, then let's move it a little bit before the cut, so. Yeah, and it's really subtle, but it helps a lot. The, so let's turn it off and see what it looks like. So if we go around like this, and then it sort of suddenly stops, that's... Something is kind of... We're missing a, an opportunity here, right? So when we enable the empty movement again, we can kind of go around like this, and it feels a little better. We can even exaggerate. I think we can exaggerate this a little bit. Oh, is the stream lagging? Send the emoji thing if the stream is done. You should set denoising also in cycles. That's a good point. That's something that we should have done when we were comparing Avian cycles. But for this one, a really slow animation where we're kind of exploring the fogginess of the volumetric scatter. I think it's... Oh, is the stream down? I'm getting error messages in the... Studio app here. Let me just have a little look. Uh, Carper Fjord leaving that's bad but um, yeah okay so stream is good yeah I'm getting these really big yellow kind of boxes of text on my computer when the stream lags a little bit so I I didn't really expect the stream to be up for so long I thought it was going to stop but yeah now we have this camera movement going whoop, and then close up and we can see it as sort of like the Final twist, and then it settles. You know what? Let's do a little bit of um, noise on this one as well. Oh, what? Oh, that's rotation. That's weird. 
Uh, yeah, we have to make it a location then. Boop. Oh, that's too much. Um, yeah, that's good. And then, okay, so let's copy this one, paste it, give it a random value. Boop, 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 boop. And this one, shabba boop. There we go. Oh, so it's yeah, it's too it's too strong. Let's uh, do a little bit of uh, down here. Oh, what's that? It just suddenly stops. What? I don't understand. Okay, well, that's... Yeah, that's sort of the end of the animation anyways. So let's make these guys um, into a video. What's your plan for the materials? <laughs> Well, this was my plan. <laughs> I was thinking um, like a diffuse material. Yeah, okay, so we end it there. Yeah, I think that's good. So let me just go ahead and um, see where to... Yeah, so under file format, let's go FFMP video. Okay, so just a quick note about rendering. I think when you're rendering in cycles, you should always render in image sequences because the render times are just so long, right? But in Eevee, I think it's no problem to render as a video because each frame just, it, it isn't really a long render. So if you have to do it again, it's, it's no problem. So if you just wanna do a quick video from Eevee, I won't be mad at you. So. Let's turn me off a little bit and set the file format to FFmpeg video. And uh, under encoding, I don't really like this Matroska container, although it's really good for rendering uh, and then kind of continuing the renderer again, I guess. But um, let's do QuickTime because it's just supported by so much many more players. You can upload it to your phone via Dropbox and it just plays really uh, quickly. But Matroska is is good, but it's just not so available. And uh, let's set the output quality to high quality. And um, let's select where it will be saved. Yeah, so here, sorry. Uh, let's do a render. Mm, what should we call this? Swirly, okay, swirly guys. Version one, and let's always, promise me this if you're watching, always version your stuff. Even if it's the absolute final version you're ever going to make in your life, and you have one week left to live, give it a version number, because it's always going to be final, final, final. Yeah, so it's always going to be a new version at some point. And people who have worked in the industry for a long time, they do this, zero, zero, one because they know it's going to be at least a hundred versions. So, but I don't think this stream is going to be a hundred versions. So let's do zero one. Um, and then, yeah, I think we're good to render actually. And you know, I don't think the stream should crash, but if it does, uh, or I just hope it doesn't, let me just zoom out a little bit. So it sort of zooms in. Yeah, that's good. If you aren't changing materials, can we make it look a little better in post? Um, I'm not really sure if this is the easiest thing to make look better in post, but uh, oh, let's uh, enable motion blur. 
it's uh, right here. There we go. And um, let's do a... Uh, yeah, so I think we're good to render it actually. Version no, version zero one amateur stream, yes, that is uh, uh, technically I'm am amateur, yeah. So I should uh, I should be doing version zero zero one probably. Uh, comp some lens glare, interesting. Uh, do you use the high contrast setting? Uh, no, I don't. There are some things you can do, I guess, with the uh, and the color color management. And the high contrast one, uh, but I'm good. I think uh, this is going to require some... The problem with this render right now is that we're going to get a lot of banding here, I guess. Because of the smooth gradient that looks really good on our monitor right now, but we're rendering out the video compressed version. And the advice I gave earlier that we should do a video export because it's a uh, EV render, this is going to be like a five minute render, I guess. So I'm not really sure if that's an advice I would stick to. I would probably export this as an open EXR sequence if I were to do it again. And then with some missed pass and all that good stuff, so we could kind of comp some stuff later. Ooh, that's some sharp shadow. Yeah. Or is it though? I think it's quite soft hair. It's just this horrible mess that's standing around and sort of ruining everything, I think. Can you change the color of this gray thing? Uh, no, we did some colors earlier and um, I'm just really eager to move on to the next stuff. You know what? I'm really curious if I can... Uh... Oh, by the way, is the stream lagging when I'm uh, rendering? It's interesting. If that's uh, the thing. Uh, did you activate soft shadows? I don't think I did. Okay, so if the stream isn't lagging while I'm rendering, I'm thinking we could try and uh, uh, just open another blend file and just start on the next thing already. Um, yeah, let's do that. So let me see. There we go. It's a new Blender window. Oh, it's lagging now? Yeah, it probably is. Let's just hope it doesn't crash. Oh, the stream is lagging. Oh, by the way, apparently, I think the emoji idea is a bad idea because of the um, um, the comments are being held for review if you send an emoji for some reason. Yeah, it's still lagging. I'm not sure if the it's the render or if it's the stream. It's probably a bad idea to render on stream anyways. Um... Yeah, so uh, one thing that I was trying to, or kind of planning to do, that we could do as a... How long have we been streaming? Oh, for an hour? Um, you can brainstorm while you wait. Yes, I, <laughs> I'm not sure what I could brainstorm, but... Uh, um, do you have one graphics card? Actually, on this computer, I have two graphics cards. Uh, can I see that somewhere? Preferences, um, system, yeah, yeah, so I have a 2080 Ti and a 1080. Uh, right now I have turned off the 1080 because it uh, made some, when rendering with optics, there is an issue with glass, I think, and uh, it, it it's behaving differently 
on the RTX and the GTX cards. So when you're rendering with kind of like these squares all over the screen, it's sort of like uh, the squares are ending up differently because a different GPU is rendering different kind of square. So yeah, so that's uh, why I have disabled one of them. I usually have both of them enabled. Okay, so let's, um, you know what, let's take a look at some stuff I made uh, the other day, yesterday. Uh, it's this big compositing exercise I just wanted to do with some denoising and the mist and glow and vignette and some color. And uh, let me show what it looks like. It is this um, thing. I don't know what this is. It is a rigid body simulation. Of uh, yeah, let's uh, you know what? Let's look at the result. Is this lagging? So it's like a uh, yeah, it started as a pyramid and it ended up being like a triforce thing. I just really like how it sort of like spreads out the the cubes, and then this texture on the ground is this uh, default texture for UV unwrapping stuff, I guess. You can make it really easily in Blender if you go to um, this UV editor thing and just press new and then generate a type UV grid and just press OK and then you get this UV texture. And I just think this is such a, it's a really cool texture. Because yeah, you get this sort of like a. Uh, yeah, I just I just really enjoy looking at this texture. It looks so. Um, uh, it's like a testing facility, right? And it's. I'm not really sure what you could do to sort of like, make a testing facility vibe, with textures. It's really interesting, I think. Yeah. Uh, how do you do the fish eye lens? Let's, that's a good question. Let's do that. So let's do... So here's the camera. Uh, the fish eye lens only works in cycles. So let's look through the camera. And uh, I am going to real-time preview. Oh, you know what? Let's do the 1080 for this one while we're rendering on the 2080 Ti. That's clever. Um, so let's render. And this is what the real-time preview looks like, right? And on the camera settings, let me remove my face. Uh, we are on a perspective type. Yeah, so yeah, we're on a perspective type and let's scroll down to panoramic and we get this weird sort of, um, yeah, it is, a, it is a spherical camera sort of. And then and there is a lens setting, you can sort of move this and it just stops at 15. But if you keep if you just add a manual value like 25 or 40, we still have these. I'm not sure if you can see this, but this line is a little bit sort of skewed. It, it is a fish eye lens, but it's just not like ultra wide. And a lot of people think that fish eye has to be ultra wide, but it's not. It's just a little. I'm not sure what the um, what the word is, but it. If it's not a fish eye lens, it's an aspherical lens. That is what I know. So here's all of these different things we can change. But yeah, let's try and move the camera closer. And now we can see. Yeah, and make it a little bit more wide angle. Let's do 30 millimeter. Now you get this fish eye sort of look without, um, without being a super wide angle lens. And this is a really cool effect, I think. And this works with a regular camera in Blender. You just have to set the type to panoramic instead of perspective. And then you have to force the lens value. That's the key. Because the default value here is 15. And you can sort of like, it stops there if you try and drag it up. So just manually enter the value you want. Yeah, so uh, fair question, um, um, Antoine, 
Antoin, sorry if I'm butchering your name. Um, we could just use the lens detorsion node, right? But um, I think that's difficult to work with because you're getting like a um, at the edges of the screen, you're getting you're losing data because it's sort of like wrapping the image around, right? So you're you're sort of messing with the pixels. But I think it's really cool with the cycles cameras that you're you're just messing with the ray tracing lighting data, so you're getting a full sensor readout. Really cool. Okay, so there's a good question from uh, Wilson Batista. Why don't you render with CUDA? So I'm rendering with optics, but just it's just so much faster. If you're on the RTX uh, 2080 Ti, I think it's almost twice as fast as CUDA. So the reason why I have disabled it in this render or in the other project that I was working on earlier, uh, some cycle stuff, um, that nothing to do with this stream. Uh, then I had disabled the 1080 Ti because it's it gives a little bit of dis different result if there are some smooth diffuse shapes with glass next to it. I'm not really sure what the bug was, but there were some uh, darker and brighter tiles because of the tiling when you're rendering. So, but yeah, the reason I'm running with optics instead of CUDA is because optics is faster. It's a little bit less stable, but um, I mean, you, I haven't really. Blender just stopped crashing really after like 2.83. I don't. Blender just don't really crash anymore for me, which is amazing. Uh, unless you're doing like big particle simulations, which were, well, then you're asking for trouble basically. Uh, hey, I'm very new to Blender. Any key tips or things I should know? What should my first project be? Um, um, I think that's the wrong question. I don't think you should be looking for a project. You should just get in there. Just get... Uh, um, I mean, like, w one of the things that made me get into Blender was that it's just... Uh, it. People say that Blender is limitless, like you can do anything, but the truth is you you can't do anything, right? So you have, there are these like sort of, well, if you do it this way, something happens differently. So it becomes almost like a game. And some features like the modifiers, this is sort of like a, like a spell book where you're kind of like trying different things like the bevel or the array or the boolean or the, they're all sort of like mechanics. And then you can post it online and then you get like a score and that's the damage <laughs> i mean there are some weird links to gaming i think in blender so uh <laughs> so it's it's like a socially accepted addiction because you're making stuff that people looks look look at i don't know it's getting really late it's oh it's past midnight actually oh oh was it just lagging right now Stream lagging. Oh, I was getting so excited with that analogy. Oh well. Oh, the render is finished. Let's have a look. Or is it... Uh, is it rendering? No, is it uh, lagging? Is it back? Have you tried the Gumroad Screen Space Global Illusion project? No, I saw some tweets about it and it looks really cool, but... Um, uh, this is going to sound really, uh, I'm not sure what's going to sound like, but I'm not really a fan of using plugins for Blender, like third-party plugins. I really try to avoid third-party plugins for Blender because you're getting these, uh, I mean, the, the reason you're using Blender is because it's so available, right? It's free and it's open source and you can download it everywhere and you can just install it on everything that you have and it just works. But why would you like be dependent on plugins and have to download them in a folder and keep them with you on a memory stick or a Dropbox or I just really love clean blender like a vanilla blender Poof, that's good. That's really good. So let's look at the render Interesting It looks really smooth 
not necessarily the playback, but um, it looks really... I'm just so surprised every time I see an EV render. I'm just so surprised at how smooth the shadows can be. Because I'm sort of like... Um, I've always had this uh, convincing that uh, Eevee would be just so harsh with the shadows. But yeah, I really enjoy this smooth sort of like... Um, this smooth lighting and then the diffuse material. And, then, and it's a little bit of bloom on the on the diffuse. I really like that. Okay, so here's a good question from Pixel Dev asks, "Hey, <laughs> hey, how do you use the textures you get from websites in Blender?" Really good question. So, let's open a new one. And um there is this one add-on that sort kind of it solves all the problems, and it's uh, it's not an add-on you have to download. <laughs> uh, sorry for my rant earlier. It is uh, just like a built-in thing, and it's called Node Wrangler, and I think a lot of people are using it. And it has this one feature that just is really good. And if you have like a material on this cube, so here's this cube's material, right? You have this principled BSDF. Oh, sorry principle BSDF and when I press Control shift T um, and let's go to uh, I don't even have a really nice I can't really browse my textures when I'm streaming because of some client work um, do I have some textures no I don't really have any textures wait let me let me figure this out okay so let me just hide myself for a little bit. Um, yeah, and let's go here. Uh, sorry about this. I'm just going to go through some folders that are some, uh, some stuff. Uh, sorry. Here we go. Okay, so I'm in. Uh, yeah, there's me again. Um, so here I have a folder. There we go. Here I have a folder with a lot of materials, right? It's just um, stuff that I've downloaded from. I think it's cc0textures.com. It is a. Like everything is in the public domain. It's a lot of free textures there, and it's an amazing website. So uh, I just downloaded some PNGs. And they come in this, so let's take a look at this, um, this marble is really good. So here you can see, if you see the display mode, you can see that all these textures look really good, right? So hang on, let me just, uh, soup, sorry. Um, all these textures. So here's the trick. In the, the principal BSDF node, when you have the node wrangler enabled, you take this one and you press Control shift t and then you kind of like, the, you open the stuff, the folder where you have the textures, and this one is called color, this one is called displacement, normal, and roughness, and then just select all of them and just press principal texture. And it sort of just figures all of it out. So now when we go to Yeah, let's go Eevee, so it's a little bit snappier. There we go. Everything is set up with the roughness and the normal map and the displacement map. And it's all sort of like set up. So that's how you um, import textures from other software to Blender. Yeah. Okay, so that's our result for this stream. Um, any more questions? Uh, yo, lots of loot. Why you change name? Yes, <laughs> the channel is called Polyfjord now. Um, funny that you ask. Uh, I would like to talk about Polyfjord. What is it? It is a um, 
startup company, uh, which me and my friend Turgar is, um, we're co-founding it. It is uh, going to be a little bit of an animation studio and a YouTube channel and uh, a lot of fun stuff. I'm currently writing my master thesis about um, something along the lines of creative freedom and, you know, involving third parties. And Polyfjord is all about just making stuff online. So it is a, it's an animation company with me and my friend Turgar. And uh, we actually just got the name Polyfjord as a registered trademark in the US and Norway. So it's kind of like official for a few days ago. That's a year of emails. And that's really cool. So Polyfjord is going to be like a uh, journey um, and it's going to be a lot more content after I've written my master thesis, which I think it's in the middle of June is that supposed to be in. So, uh, about the thesis, uh, I'll be interviewing, or I'll be looking for interviewing, um, <laughs> or I hope to, like, high-profile YouTubers. So if you, uh, it's, it's not really, I'm not really sure if it's possible. But if you know someone, or if you are a YouTuber with a lot of viewers uh, and subscribers, preferably like over a hundred or two hundred thousand, um, DM the Polyfjord uh, Instagram channel, for example, and um, I would love to just ask you some questions. And uh, everything will be anonymous. I have this. Uh, document that uh, you can read which guarantees that all the data will be deleted so if anyone is interested in talking about creative freedom and they own a YouTube channel or they are responsible for those sort of like business development uh, aspects of YouTube channel I would really like to talk to you uh, but uh, you're not here to hear me talk about this you are here to watch the stream um, with Blender. Discord server. That would be interesting. So let's... Uh, yeah, Leo, Fred, uh, feel free to uh, shoot a message to the Polyfjord uh, um, Instagram channel. Instagram page. Yeah. Uh, that's, we don't really have an email yet. So yeah, so when so Polyfjord is basically it's not um, it's not like me. I am not Polyfjord. It is the name of the company. So it's it's kind of me. It's us. It's me and Tulgar. He's an amazing uh, guy. You will uh, definitely hear more about him soon. Uh, drop your Discord. Well, <laughs> we don't have a Discord, <laughs> but uh, it's a good idea. Let's um, yeah, let's definitely try and make that happen. Uh, Ola de Plenty, I got introduced to you from your smooth camera animation tutorial. Thank you, that's so cool to hear. Uh, it was an amazingly fun tutorial to make. And it's a technique I use every day, almost. Well, yeah, I'm not really sure where we go from here. Um, okay, so let's do one final thing that I was thinking about. Uh, yeah, let's do... Um, Let's do a sphere kind of falling down on a bunch of cubes. And we'll end the stream with that. Because I was doing this uh, thing. Here it is. Just an animation. Of course, there's fog and it's in Eevee. And it's this cube is really heavy. It's like 48 kilograms. And each cube is it's sort of really lightweight. You can sort of... And this is baking right now in real time, so we can play this back and we can look at it smoothly. So let's have a look. Oh, I thought we could look at it smoothly. I guess my streaming software is taking too much... Uh... No, there we go. Yes, I just think that's a really cool effect. So let's try and... Um, yeah, let's go. Antoni, great. So let's make a new Blender file. Um, yeah, and scale up this plane. Let's go to edit mode first. Oh, sorry, let me uh, enable my screencast keys. 
Yeah, so delete everything and make a plane. This is going to be like the plane where everything happens on. We could scale it up a little bit more. And let's add a cube. Front orthographic view, scale it down a little bit. Make sure you do all the scaling in edit mode. That's really important when doing rigid body simulations. So let's scale this down to 0.5, for example. Move it up and uh, it's going to be our first cube. So let's give this a material, cube. Let's give the ground a material, ground. And then let us take the cube and give it a better bevel modifier. And uh, let's like this. Now let us go to object, rigid body, add active. And then select the ground, object, rigid body, add passive. So now if we move the ground, if we move the cube up, press space, we have a rigid body simulation. And under scene properties and rigid body world, uh, let's increase the speed. Oh, sorry. Let's increase the speed. So let's set it to, for example, two or even four. Yes, yeah, so that's a little bit too fast. Let's do two. Yeah, that's good. And I want to increase the friction of the ground. So let's go. Um, yeah, let's go in. The, sorry, let's go in the physics properties on the ground and on the surface response. Let's turn up the friction. Yeah, I think that's that's a little bit better because we're gonna make uh, like the big sphere just going crushing down. So uh, it feels like we're at the end of the stream now. So I'm just gonna wrap this up and uh, yeah, let's let's post the final animation on Instagram so you can follow. Yeah, so follow Polyfior on Instagram and we will post the final animation there. So let's duplicate the cube, Alt D, and then on the Z axis. And now we can press Shift R to repeat this. Broop. There we go. Tower of cubes. So let's go into, let's select the ground plane, go to edit mode and scale it up a little bit more. Scaling in edit mode keeps the scale at one. Yes, that's exactly what it does. So that's what we're trying to keep. Scale 1.000. That's very important when doing rigid body simulations. And if you forget to scale using the edit uh, mode, you can just, uh, like this, if it has a scale of a whatever value, you can press Control A and just apply the scale. So it's this is just a nice way to prevent bugs. Yeah, you know what, let's save this. And um, yeah, so next step, let us, let me just hide this ground so it's easier to work with the cubes. And let us make a box of cubes. Like this. Um. Boop. So there's our cube tower, and it looks like this. Oh, sorry, I'm clicking too many buttons. It's our cube tower. So let us make a ball here. And it's going to sort of like work its way through the cubes. So it has to be like just a little bit heavier than everything. So it's going to sort of, yeah. Do you use a mouse for pencil drawings? Um. Yeah, I'm just so if you have if you're using a computer mouse, I have the uh, um, Logitech G502 Hero. I, I think it's amazing. I just really enjoy this um, this hardware. It feels really good in my hand, and it has a lot of buttons that can be customized. And um, if you set the pointer position in Windows to just disable it or like pointer acceleration, you can look this up. It is really important. To have that disabled when you're working because then you can sort of like move your mouse a lot more snappy around and you you can keep your muscle memory very um very nice thing to do that is why i really struggle to work with uh, max because they um they have always this pointer precision thing 
Uh, but a pen is really nice for like sculpting, yeah, as it said. And um, uh, and the pressure thing, if you have a good, like I, I have a really old, like a Wacom thing, the, uh, what is it, the Wacom Intuos 5, or like it's an older one. It's an older version, but it checks out, I guess. Yeah, so let's make the sphere. Let me just select this top row here. Shift, oh. Select the top row of cubes. Uh, Shift S, cursor to selected. And make an icosphere. And let's double the subdivisions to four. Let's move it up. Tab, so, oh, scale. And I think this is going to be perfect. That is sort of like pushes these away. Yeah. So let's go to object, rigid body, add active. Huh, it's not really heavy enough, right? Wouldn't you agree? It's sort of like, it's made of air. So let's just simply in the physics properties, First, we can set the shape to sphere, and then, oh, by the way, um, let's set the shape to all of these boxes. So you want to kind of take all of them. Let's set the shape to box, and if you just click this, it's just going to do it on one of them. But if you hold down Alt, and then you do it, all of these gets changed. So now all of these have box collision. Really nice. So let's take the sphere and down here under physics, down under physics, physics properties, um, let's just increase the mass. Let's try 50 kilos and see what that's, that looks like. Cool. And you get these four pillars. That's an interesting effect. So this is a really simple scene, but uh, I think it's so fun to just see the w kind of the sphere just working its way through the, the tower, especially at the top here at the very beginning. Just sort of the... Really cool. It looks a little bit... It looks cool back backwards too. Okay, so let's, um, yeah, we're in Eevee. Let's do a, uh, you know what? I'm happy about the simulation. Let's just bake the entire thing. So under rigid body world, under cache, um, let's just bake it. So the simulation isn't symmetrical. Uh, oh, move this sphere slightly off center. Interesting. Yeah, we could try that. Let's just delete the bake and let's move it a little bit over there and let's see what happens. Good suggestion. Huh. Very interesting. Perhaps it's cool if the if the sphere is a little bit lighter, like 30 kilograms. And let's move it a little bit more off the grid. Now it's not that much of a... Interesting. I think the center looks best. If it's, um, I think it's best with center and then a little bit more weight. So let's just give it 50 kilograms and let's move it to, the, oh, it's not really, yeah. Let's move it to the center and perhaps not exactly the center. Uh, 
yeah, that's really cool, I think. This ball is me playing Jenga. Huh, that's an interesting strategy. Okay, so um, yeah, let's just bake this guy under um, scene properties and just bake. And we will do like a similar stuff from the previous scene where we just add a little bit of a light in Eevee and a little bit of volumetrics and we'll just knock out this little render. And um, I think that's it. I've been really happy with the stream so far and uh, it's been great. Just got back from eating homemade pizza. What did I miss? You know what? Um, let's just start the render and then we'll do a recap of everything we've done this stream. That's great. So, let's go to render view. So add a point light. I think I'm going to change this to a spotlight actually. And then I'm going to increase this. Yeah, and then we'll move it down a little bit. So it's super high contrast right now, but uh, under uh, volume in the words thing, uh, let's set it to volume scatter. And let's just lower the density a lot. This is the same thing we did in the other project. And then we get this really beautiful, uh, I just absolutely love this thing with Eevee. And then we can make the lamp just a little bit stronger. Um, oh, sorry. Let's make the lamp light just a little bit uh, brighter. Um, there we go, you can get some god rays here. That's perfect. And let's do the bloom. Um, bloom, bloom, motion blur, and just some stuff. You know what? Let's um, go to the light again and enable contact shadows. It's just a little bit of help. And it's just so amazing to see in Eevee that this just plays in real time. Still, it is a just like a physics simulation that looks really cool and it or it behaves predictably, <laughs> is probably the correct term. I'm not really, we're not inventing something amazing here, I think. I think this is really fun. The way it sort of like works its way through. It's like of, uh, it must be really fun to work on those big movies where they're sort of tearing down big structures and just working with really powerful hardware and putting on a big render and coming back the next day and watching stuff. Can you put the light inside the tower? Interesting, let's try it. Um. Oh, that's very spooky. Wow. <laughs> oh, perhaps I shouldn't turn it upside down. I should do it like this. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, that looks really cool. That's such a good idea. Wow, look at that. Huh. That's just so much cooler than I expected. Very interesting. The, the bad thing about doing like this baked is that I'm... <laughs> I'm not baked, but the, the bad thing about doing this when the physics are already pre-baked is that you, you can't really... I mean, you can get tired of the same simulation, is what I'm trying to say. Point light, let's try. Oh, it's not completely in the middle. Oh, because that's not in the middle. There we go. Wow, that looks cool. You sure we shouldn't have it as a ring light? Th this is going to be the final render, let me tell you. Point. Perhaps I should... 
Yeah, so let's do a spot. I think that's really fantastic. Look at that. Yeah, let's just make a camera right away. Oh, so we need to be further back. Yeah. What? How do I? Ah, oh, I don't wanna. There we go. Oh, that's good. Now we're getting somewhere. Why don't I just... That's pretty cool. Does emissive material work with EVA? I don't have... I don't think so, uh, but I think there is this new thing, this plugin that uh, a person above here was talking about, or earlier, uh, some OpenGL stuff, um, and that, uh, I've seen some renders on Instagram, it looks amazing, so, but yeah, let's uh, try and um, render this out as an animation, perhaps we should do some just a little bit of camera animation. Yeah, let's do a little bit of a, just the camera. Let's just make it go around, like really slowly. So, uh, let's make an empty. Boop. And then, there we go. And then parent. Oh, the camera is way too small. I'm going to increase the viewport display. Shoop. Um, so let's have a look. Wait, sorry, I'm messing around with the stuff. There we go. Okay, so yeah, let's do a little bit of an animation here on the Let's just do like a slow, oh, Mr. Camera. Yeah, let's do a little bit of a, what? Oh, <laughs> there we go. So let's move this around just a little. Yeah, it's just, we just need a casual linear extrapolation. There we go. This is a cool scene, right? I think that's cool. Space out the cubes a bit. I'm not sure if I understand. Oh, for the simulation. Yeah, it could be interesting. Oh, wait. We have scaled up. Look at this. Some cubes are like falling out because we scale this up after the simulation. So, yeah, we're gonna have to scale this down again. But what was the scale? Can we make a new plane and make it uh, like eight times and then eight times again? No. Ah, uh, I don't remember. Oh, is that times four? Is that correct? I think so. No, it's a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay, crisis averted. Oh, what happened to the... No! The ball wasn't... We didn't bake it. Oh, well. What? Or did we? No. Let's delete the bake and try again. Oh, we're gonna have to... How do you add fog? Let me show you. Uh, rigid body add passive. Okay, so the fog is just a few buttons on the right there in Eevee. So under the world properties, uh, there's a little 
kind of thing called volume. And uh, let me just remove this one. So it's going to look like this when you open Blender. And you can press volume and set it to volume scatter. And everything just becomes black because the density is so thick. So if you just turn this down, let's try 0 0.01. Now we're getting some sort of like a fog effect. Like this, you can see the sort of like, and you get this god race and it's, it's really, it's a really cool thing to do in, in Eevee. Okay, so let's do a render. Um, how long is the animation going to be? Oh, we need to bake it first. Add wind, vortex wind. <laughs> Sounds like we're adding some bake time. Uh, I'm just real. I'm honestly really happy about the way the sphere just sort of like works its way through the cubes, and it's like a heavy, kind of unstoppable thing. I really like it. Pauli, they're ganske sent for us. It's Norwegian. He's saying it's getting pretty late, and uh, yes, it is. 1.30 a.m. in the morning, but I drink some energy drink for the first time in a lot of, in a really long time. Because I've just been wanting to do this stream for a while. Yeah, I think this is cool. Let's uh, add a little bit of um, just some world around. Like this. Oh, that's... <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, sorry about the music, by the way. Uh, this um, is just the same playlist over and over again from YouTube Audio Library. Um, we should do like a competition. Like whoever can find the best sounding song on YouTube audio library uh, gets uh, something. We should do that. So if you can kind of find in the YouTube audio library on YouTube, you have to be logged in, I think, on your YouTube account. You can just browse through all this uh, video, this um, sounds that are available for use um, in YouTube videos. And I'm really struggling to find like good ones. So if you can find some good ones, just Feel free to uh, shoot a message to the Polyfjord Instagram account. And that would be really appreciated, actually. Okay, so let's give this a little bit of thickness. It's probably not going to show, but... Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, like that. Uh, please save the stream recording on the channel. That's a really good idea. And I I think I'm going to do it. Um, here's the deal. I'm going to have to just watch through it and see that everything's okay. So after the stream, I'm just going to unlist it or like private it for a day or two and just watch through it. And then I'm going to make it available. Is that okay? I just... Uh, I haven't really made a stream into a video before, so I'm just going to have to check and see that everything is okay. So I hope that's okay, but uh, the, the plan is that this is just going to be like a really long tutorial. And we've been streaming for, yeah, almost two hours. This, is a, this has been really great. So let's take a look at this rendered. Oh my god, the motion blur looks amazing. Very good. Yeah, we'll be rendering this right away, I think. Perhaps we should make this a little bit softer. Um, light radius. Yeah, perfect. Increase the samples. Time flies when you're having fun, yes. 
indeed. Okay, so let's do the render. And uh, let's do, you know what? I don't think we need any more than 64 frames, 64 samples. Uh, we need, let's do 200 frames. And uh, let me turn me off so you can see. And let's set it to FFmpeg, QuickTime, high quality. Uh, and let us go here. Um, cube fall. That's what this is going to be called. Oh, uh, ah, you probably didn't see that. Uh, the typing, or did you? I'm not sure. Um, it would be cool if you did. Um, no audio, of course. Yeah, so, oh, let me see this one. That looks good. So, we are rendering. Why QuickTime over MP4? Uh, you saw it, <laughs> good. <laughs> Why QuickTime over MP4? Uh, if this is live, is this live? If so, respond, respond it. It is live, yeah. I think it's like, on, under two seconds delay. It's really cool. Google is has this uh, I enabled this ultra low latency thing So it's it's really low latency Yeah, uh, what do you use for streaming I use um, OBS Uh, yeah, I'm just reading some comments to see if there was something I missed. Can you add some texture from your texture folder? Uh, sorry for um, not doing more of a texture-based workflow this time. Oh my god, look at that motion blur. Yeah, so sorry for not doing like more of a texture-based workflow. Um, this stream has all been about EV and smooth shadows and diffuse material. I think that's really... Yeah, it's amazing. The best thing about Eevee is the diffuse material and the... Yeah. Although Cycles is really good when you get the diffuse lighting bouncing around. That's great as well. Um, okay, so what camera do you use? Um, OBS plus webcam or tether cam. I'm actually using um, Elgato uh, display capture. So it's capturing the HDMI which is coming out from my Sony camera, which is a Sony A7S Mark II. So it has a really nice um, look. The quality is actually really good. And it has a really nice depth of field. Yeah. So that's me in full screen. Mm. So uh, I would recommend just doing like a camera. And then I have a green screen behind me. So I would recommend doing like a, a big camera instead of like those small web camera ones. Because it's a really big difference. Oh, is the stream lagging? <laughs> Can we do a delay test? <laughs> I'm not really sure if that's possible. You say start when you send stop. Tucker Tucker, howdy. Hello. Imagine if you rendered it in cycles and streamed the whole time. Yeah, that would be an amazing stream. It could be cool to just make a still image though and uh, render it in cycles. Oh, the the contact shadow here is not looking that great. I don't I don't think this render is going to be like one of those keepers. <laughs> and those pieces are going to go through the floor here as well. So I'm not really sure if. Uh, oh, I can hear the fans spinning up on my computer. Yeah, I don't think this uh, render is going to be like something to look at too much, but it was a nice exercise to end the stream with, I think. Uh, oh, why QuickTime over MPEG-4? Yes, so I talked about this. Um, MPEG-4, well, I think it's Matroska that is the default one. Can I? Oh, <laughs> this animation is still playing. That's why the render takes so long. 
Let me just save this one. Uh, boop. There. <laughs> so that's why it was lagging a little bit. Um, yeah, so why the quick time? Well, I just think the Matroska format is a little bit unstable. You can see here in... The, or not unstable, it's really stable. But the container... I could have used MPEG-4, uh, but I just really like um, uh, QuickTime uh, because it plays on my phone really nicely. I have an iOS phone, so I can just paste it, uh, I can just save it to Dropbox and just sort of like sync that with my phone and I can see the QuickTime movie immediately. I haven't really tried with MP4 though, but uh, I just try to stay away from Matruska because it's, uh, it's, um, it's a video format I think not that many video players support. But yeah, let's look at the render. Cool. So the contact shadow is a little bit bad, but I think we're we're doing something interesting here with the just the first part here. Yeah, like this part. That's really cool. Thanks so much for the tutorial, thanks. Hey, that's so nice to see people uh, stopping by. Uh, this has been a really fun stream. Um, I would love to stream some more. This is going to be a challenging semester because I'll be writing my master thesis. So probably... Um, I can't promise that I will be streaming regularly, I'm sorry. Uh, because this is just a really hectic semester. But in the middle of June, um, who knows? I'll be a free person <laughs> uh, to do whatever I want and uh, not anymore a full-time student. So that's when me and Torger, as I talked about, will make Polyfjord something amazing. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure how to end this stream. Uh, I don't really have... Um what is your master project about? Uh, it is a... Um, it's going to be a master thesis uh, that I'll be writing. Uh, in, it's in entrepreneurship. So it's... Um, I'll be sort of like uh, going through um, um, creative freedom and sort of like the interference of third parties and sort of like that dilemma you have to do as a creator. Like, how much control do I want? How much money do I get in my pocket for that? What's the long-term rewards? And stuff like that. And I'm just a really fan of the open source thing. And the and I did this, uh, I'm not sure what it's called in English, but this pre-project. And then I focused a lot on uh, uh, donations and like donation-based revenue streams and like the just making stuff and then people giving back because they want to, not because they have to. I think those are interesting ideas. And um, yeah, what do you think about UV unwrapping? <laughs> That's something I've never spent time on. I just do this, smart UV project. And uh, whoop. yeah, UV unwrapping is not really something I like to do. I've heard that people are spending a lot of time on it. I tend to use procedural materials and just cheat with as much as possible with the uh, yeah, that is the way to go. <laughs> Paul Taylor, yeah. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's the stream. Um, I am going to um, go to bed because it's almost 2 in the morning. Uh, it was amazing to stream with you guys. And I hope we can uh, do it again. Ooh, where's the end button? There's the end button. <laughs> so long.